Hi, this is Pastor Eric. I want to thank you for tuning in to our midweek Bible study. Uh, we call it the midweek lift, and we just want to get just grounded in God's word. Today we're going to be in the book of Acts. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 8, uh, verses 4 through 8 today. And then we're going to spend some time praying with each other today. So excited about that. Before we get into the Bible study itself, I do want to thank God for an absolutely amazing weekend. Uh, we took some leaps of faith, put together a Friday night drive-in worship experience. It rained. It was crazy, but we had a great turnout. And it was just powerful to spend time in God's presence, to to worship, and to hear God's word preached in such great ways. And our ministry team just knocked it out of the park. So I want to do thank them. I want to thank God for meeting us in great ways. We had a great Sunday morning drive-in church service as well. Um, we continue to see new people coming to the church, connecting with the church, um, and it's really interesting what's happening. I could have never imagined things working out the way that they are. Um, could have never seen it coming this way. I think when we go back to just just um, over a year ago, when when we gave a message on a Sunday morning, casting vision for what's coming next. I don't think that we could have ever thought to ourselves. This is how God was going to do it. But he is faithful and he is awesome. And this is the greatest season in my life um, that I've ever experienced. Watching God do things, sometimes it's incredibly frustrating uh, for me because it's so outside the box of the norm uh, and what I knew. Um, but I think it's prepping me for what's coming next. And I believe this season is prepping you for what's coming next as well. And so... Uh, just just take that into consideration as we get into the Word of God today. Uh, so let's jump into it together, and then we're going to pray uh, for each other. So Acts chapter 8, we're going to be in verses 4 through 8 today. Uh, so I'm just going to read these to you. I don't have the time today to put a lot of bells and whistles on here, so uh, I'm probably not going to have time to put the verses up on, on the screen. And I apologize about that. It's just a very busy day. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this together. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 through 8. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in the city. So we're going to go back and take each verse one at a time and just break it out. So let's go back to verse 4. Uh, those, had, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Now we have to understand, going back to the verses leading into this, that the church is now under persecution. Uh, we see the, the religious institution at the time bringing a massive amount of pressure onto the emerging church. Uh, which is, is now into the thousands of believers. And there is this pressure, especially in and around Jerusalem, that we have got to get a hold of this because the, the religious leaders of the day saw the emerging church as a threat to their power um, and, and to their purpose. And so they began to push that pressure onto the church. Does that not relate kind of to today and what we see in our culture happening that, that the, the emerging culture now looks at the emerging church and says that, that the value systems are different, the agendas are different, and so the emerging culture sees the emerging church as a threat to what they want to do and what their agenda is. And so there is a conflict building in our communities uh, and in our nation right now, and I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the outcome of that will be. Um, I think that we could see a lot more of persecution against the church because of the agendas that we do see rising in our communities and that the church's agenda to put Christ first, and as you put Christ first, there are going to be things that Christ asks you to do and your life changes and you are not going to fall into the agenda of the culture. And so there is a conflict happening. And so when we look here and the conflict happened, that, that the, the Christians in this area uh, and, and 
had had dispersed. They were on the run because people were getting thrown in jail. Um, people were dying. We just saw Stephen be stoned. And so, look, there there is a little bit of fear here, but God will use the circumstances of your situation for his purposes. And so while at the surface level we look at this and go, oh no, the church is dis- it's it's over, right? It's disbanding, they're on the run. We see in the very next thing in the verse four that they had been scattered, those who had been scattered preach the word wherever they went. So God will use your situation to put you where he needs you to do what he's asking you to do. And so when I look at this, and I'm just relating to what we've been through lately as the church. We saw this pandemic. We were trying to figure out a plan. We went to the outdoor service. We kind of thought it was going to be four season, but where God began to really challenge me and change me, and I think a lot of our leaders in the church, was this word that kept coming to us is, how can we do what God is calling to do us effectively? And when we kept going back to it, we just kept hearing that what God wants to do, the number one priority is to reach the lost and preach the word. And, and so for us, we started looking at that going, look, if we go back to, to normal, if we go back to where we've been, we, we are going to miss an opportunity to reach more people. And as we have flowed with God, we have seen God's favor move. And we reach far more people now today than we ever did uh, a year ago. Um, I, I've done more preaching of the word in the last few months than I've done in the last four years combined. That's crazy to me to think that, but it's true. Um, I've reached way more people over the last few months with, with an opportunity for salvation over the last few months than over the last four years combined. And it took breaking out of the paradigm of the box. And, and I don't think just being honest, I don't think myself and I don't think the church here at Hillside would have made those moves had it not been for the circumstances underneath us causing us to push into God, hearing God's voice, and then coming up with the strategic plan that we felt like God was leading us down. And so that's one of the things that that I want to be careful as we move forward. We're not sure what happens next. And the church will need to adapt to the situations and again, not react, but respond, and that God has a plan for the church moving forward to preach the gospel and to reach the lost. Um, those are the two things that we cannot forget. And so we're going to continue to push forward and do what God asks us to do each and every day to get us where we need to be to do what God wants to do. And so um, I, I love this passage here because it parallels what we're going to talk about Sunday, and you might think, wow, pastor's really thinking and tying everything together Wednesday and Sunday, and he must be thinking you know, weeks and months ahead to be able to do this. Um, nope. Uh, God makes us look way better than we are. And so the fact that these two passages tie into we get to, to each other is God's divine plan, and he's working out the schedule. Because uh, I didn't realize it until I started looking at this yesterday going, whoa, these two passages parallel each other. Because the word scattered here that we see in verse 4 is the same uh, same verbiage that we see in Mark where Jesus talks about the, um, the, the story of scattering seeds, the parable of scattering seeds of the word of God. And, and it's the same thing here. So there is this scattering going on, and it's the word that a farmer would use to scatter seeds. God was using their situation to put them in a place where he was scattering his people like seeds on the ground to grow up and grow roots in the communities where they had gone to. And I think that is powerful. So let's continue to allow God to use the things in our life to direct us, to put us right where he needs us to be when we need to be there. Verse 5. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. This word proclaimed, right, is a word like herald. He was heralding the message of God. So he had showed up. So like when there was a great dignitary would come to a community back in the days of Jesus, often there would be a herald that would announce, hey, 
you know, so and so is here, or King so and so, or diplomat so and so, and 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 this is what they're relating here to what Philip is doing is that he's proclaiming, he is saying, "Hey, I've got a message from God for you." So he is speaking boldly, and he says he goes down to Samaria, and so when you leave your home in the morning. And, and you're going to the grocery store, or you're going to your workplace, or you're going to your campus, you have an opportunity to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim Jesus. And, and we do that not just in what we say, but what we do, how we re- react, how we respond, um, how, how we process things. Um, that all should be a witness for Christ. And so we want to be the best witnesses we can be wherever we go. And so you might think, well, I'm not going to be traveling. You know, we can't do missionary trips to wherever. But the mission field is right here in our backyard. And the trip to the grocery store, the trip to the gas station is a trip to Samaria for you. Um, It is the same thing that that God was doing in Philip. God wants to do in and through you. Uh, And so continue to keep that. The opportunities are there for you. The opportunities are there for you to serve. And so if we're aware of it and and if we pray about it and we're like, Lord, let me see the opportunities. Let me understand. Just Sunday, I had this great opportunity. I was driving, uh, getting ready to come here to church, and I saw this guy sitting in the park. And I had invitations for church in my my front seat because I just keep them handy now these days. And uh, I was like, oh, I need to get to work. I need to get start working on stuff for church. and just that conviction going, no, no, this is an opportunity. And I stopped the car and I got out and I went to talk to this guy and his name was Dean. And we got to talking about church and outdoor church and, and coming and um, invited him to come to church. And God put me in the right place at the right time to connect with Dean. And God's going to put you in the right place at the right time. You might think it's just a trip to the gas station. God sees it as a divine opportunity. Um, and so let's just keep our eyes open. Let's keep our hearts open. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to, to spur us. It's not so much these huge, big things. Like we always think that God has predestined me to do these huge, great, big things. It's in the small things. God can move so huge and so powerfully and change so many lives. So look, be looking for those small opportunities to serve Christ and to shine for Christ. Um, verse six, uh, When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. Now, obviously God is moving in Philip's life and allowing him as he's praying for people, as he's sharing the gospel, as he sees opportunity and need. He's praying for people and God's moving. Jesus is moving and healing people. And this is phenomenal. But now we see for the second time that both in Stephen and in Philip, these were not guys that were at the front lines of 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 the um, the leadership of the church. They were serving. They were serving, and we see in both of them the opportunity to serve. As they served, they shared. As they shared, they prayed. As they prayed, miraculous signs followed them. There is a connection between seeing miracles happen and the preaching of God's word. And by preaching, it is the communication of the gospel. That is what we're talking about. And so it's a broad term. I know that sometimes we get stuck and we think preaching is standing behind a pulpit and speaking, but we've got to think of it in a broader context. It is the sharing of the good news of Jesus Christ. And when you look at that, there seems to be these these ties all over the New Testament of miraculous signs seem to follow and go hand in hand with the Word of God. And so I think one of the reasons we have not seen more miracles in the past is that we have not been sharing the gospel effectively. Because it seems when you share the gospel effectively, miracles seem to go hand in hand with that. And the emphasis, especially in this passage, is not on miracles. The emphasis is on what was spoken, what was shared, right? Go back and look at it. Verse 6, 
and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what? What he said. The, the moving of the Spirit, the moving of God, powerful signs and wonders should not take away from the Word. They should brought, draw people closer to the Word. And maybe we've gotten that backwards in church culture. That we have wanted so much the razzle-dazzle of God, so much of the frosting and not the cake, so much of, of, of the experience and not the heart change, that we've emphasized the wrong thing. And we've made it all about the show and not about the heart change that God's Word brings. And so we put the emphasis on we want to see God put on a show. We want to see God do fireworks. We want to see, we want to experience feelings and tingly feelings. And, and we've missed out on a deeper meaning of our life change. And so the priority has to be on the Word of God, the transformation that the Word of God has. When that seems to be in the right place, miracles just draw people into that. And so I do believe God still wants to heal. God still wants to do amazing things. God wants to lavish his love on his people and on people that need him. But we have got to prioritize things right. We've got to get it in the right order. We've got to put our stuff together. Um, if you, and you've probably seen this illustration, but if you have a glass jar, right, and, and you had all these different rocks and sand and water, what you put in first matters. Because if you put the water in first and then you put the sand, water flows out of the thing. And, 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 and if you put the, the small, all the small rocks in first, you can't get any of the big rocks in. But if you start with the big rocks and you prioritize the most important things first, and then you slowly get to the smaller stuff, you can fit a whole lot more materials in that jar. And you've not lost out on the big rocks in your life because you put them in there first. Let's make sure we're putting the word of God first. It's the firm foundation we're on and we're applying it to our life. We're working through the word of God together. Um, verse seven. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many and many paralytics and cripples were healed. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie seven and eight together. So there was great joy in the city. Now, let's take verse 8. So there was great joy in the city. Go back just, just to the three verses earlier. Four, verse 4. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Those under persecution, they were scattered by persecution. Hardships, struggle, tough times. Remember, people are being thrown in jail. People are being killed. Yet we see here just four verses later, so there was great joy in the city. And why was there great joy? Because God was still doing great things. God's word was still changing lives. We can have joy in the midst of hardship, struggle, and persecution. And that's hard for us to wrap our mind around because I think we tie joy so much to our external things that are happening in our life. Like, oh man, we've got extra money to spend or we're, you know, we're able to go on vacation this year or we're able to do this. And, you know, we make it through the pandemic season. Let me tell you, there's going to be great joy when people are like, we can just go do stuff that we always did before. You know, it's, it's, but we tie our joy so much to that kind of stuff. So much to the external. Here, the joy is tied to what's happening internal. And maybe we've got to just got to be rewired by the Holy Spirit so that we can have joy in the midst of hardships. And look, we all are having tough days, even the best of us. We can have a good day and we go home and then it's like we fall apart, right? And I mean, look, it's depressing to watch some of the stuff that's happening. It's tough to watch this. There are days where I just feel overwhelmed, just done in. You know, I'm dealing with physical stuff in my life. And 
and and I'm dealing with emotional stuff and I'm I'm trying to help people deal with their physical and emotional stuff and it, it can just become overwhelming. We all have those days. But our joy is not in the things that are around us. Our joy is in Jesus. Our joy is in the greatest gifts he's given us, our family, our friends, his promises and his word. So I want to pray this morning that one, we would be effective. Two, that we would we would experience the joy God really truly has for us. Even in the midst of hardships, we would experience God's joy. So can we go to prayer today? I know that we didn't do a lot of, of scriptures here, but I think there's a lot of meat here. And I think there's a lot that we can apply to our life. Uh, so let's begin to pray. And first, let's just ask God to clean these hearts and minds. Lord, I thank you that, God, you're meeting with us today, that you love your people, that you love you love us so much. And Lord, I pray for the areas where we all struggle today, the areas where sin still has a hold of us, where maybe we've let sin win in some of our, our, our life in certain areas. And today, Lord, I pray for the strength to fight. I pray for the strength to wrap our minds around your promises and to step forward, that when we struggle, we would ask you for help. Or just like Jeb talked to us yesterday, that we need an expert in our life, God, that, that can help us in the moments where, where we need help. You are the expert of life. And Lord, we know that, Lord, you walk with us, that you've empowered us with your Holy Spirit. We've got your word. Let us not take it for granted. Lord, you speak to us today. And Lord, help us hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit to fight where we need to fight, to let go of things we need to let go of, to let go of weights that aren't ours to carry, to take up the things you've asked us to carry. Lord, this is a, a season that's unlike any I've ever experienced. The needs are so great, but you are a great God. Lord, help us. We're just going to work through the scripture this morning, Lord. Lord, you scatter seed, and Lord, we're your seed today. Lord, put us where you need us to be when you need us to be there. Lord, let it not be by our own power that we act or, 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 or do or say or speak or serve, but Lord, may it be with the power that you can give us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that, God, we can be effective seed, that we would take root where you plant us, that we would make the best of every opportunity given to us. We fall so short that we would lean heavily in your grace. But Lord, we would have effort behind us to have the right mindset, to pray for opportunity, to see opportunity, and then take hold of every opportunity that comes our way. Lord, as we look at the next verse here, and, and Lord, that you, you, you put us where you need us. Lord, help us to not have a negative outlook on you or our situation because of where you've put us. You called Philip to Samaria. You've called us exactly where we're meant to be. Lord, for some people today, they're in transition. They're, they're, they're in need of a new job. They're in need of, 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 of new support. They're, they're on the move. And Lord, I just pray for those that are in need of a job, you would open up the right job. Let it be a blessing to them, but also a place where they can serve and bring light and to share you. And Lord, we pray, God, that we would prioritize the word of God. Lord, where we have prioritized other things in the church, Lord, I pray that we would prioritize the preaching of the word and preaching of the word to the lost, that this is not a club, that the church is not a cruise ship, that God, you've called us for a mission and we need to be on point and that, God, we would see opportunity to speak, to preach your word effectively. I pray for myself that, God, may I preach at a level that I have never been able to, to preach and communicate at before. Lord, I pray for our people that they would want to share the gospel story in incredible and, cr and creative ways. Uh, Lord, we realize as the shifting sands underneath us change, the priority is the communication of the gospel. And Lord, we just pray that, 
that you would use the circumstances we have to set us up for success to preach your word, that we would be unified of one accord moving forward, that God, no longer would we have have issues with with the things that really don't matter, that Lord, we would learn to stand together, to hope together, to pray together. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that we would see miraculous signs and wonders, not to fall in love with miraculous signs and wonders, but Lord, to help the word be preached at the most effective level possible. We pray that we would see awesome healings and people delivered from addictions and and controlling issues in their life, that God, that that would draw people in closer to you, that Lord, we would see people in our community get saved at a level we've never seen before. Lord, pack out this place and help us to share it, to to invite people to come to drive-in church, to to connect with us online, to, to do all these things. And Lord, help us, myself and our leadership team, figure out ways to make these connections work. It's it's so different. But God, there that there's ways to get this done. And Lord, we want to be on page with you. We want to be on point with you. And Lord, finally, we pray about verse 8 in our life. Lord, this city experienced great joy even in the midst of persecution. Lord, may you be the joy in our life, the highlight of our life. May we not take for granted the things that you've blessed us with, the relationships we have, our family, the the, the places that we have to live. May may we be blessed and not, not being spoiled, but God, being grateful. Help us to be grateful today for what we do have. Lord, help us to not keep looking for greener pastures when you've asked us to live in the field that we're in. Lord, help us to be content and to help us experience great joy, great joy, even in the midst of craziness. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor today. Be with your people. Empower them. Do great and mighty things in them. Lord, for those who need a miracle today, move in their life. Do a great miracle. Show up in ways that are just going to blow their minds. Lord, for the person today who's praying, who feels they don't have the right words, and they're praying such simple prayers, God, show up in such huge ways because it's not about the words, it's about the heart. Lord, I love you. I have my own struggles, my own fights that I'm fighting even right now in this moment. God, I know there are others in the same way. Lord, help us to find victory in you. Help us to be overcomers. and Give us courage to move forward. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I am looking forward to seeing you at Drive-In Church this Sunday at 11 a.m. Let's go after God together. Let's believe for a powerful word. Let's believe for a great time of worship. Um, And let's believe this word can play out on Sunday morning right here in our community. Invite somebody to come with you to church. Uh, Invite a lot of people to come to church. What, What does it hurt? What do you have to lose? Nothing, but everything to gain in God's kingdom. So let's invite people to come to Drive-In Church this Sunday. Let's believe God's going to move powerfully. Please pray for me as I prep the word for Sunday. I want to bring it. I want to bring it. uh, Everything that God wants for us. And so love you guys so much. Uh, You can always reach out to us uh, on all our different platforms at hillsideassembly.org. We love you guys so much. We'll see you soon. (laughs) 